Good morning, evening, afternoon. I'm Tina Cat. Welcome to my channel. Today we are playing Echoes, a loose nine fan game previously. Um, where we was getting the tour of the facility and uh we got to hear a little you know, speech from our commander about how Wait Ford isn't really all that bad. Kind of a lesser of evil sort of situation. And um running into guards and we was like, Well, I guess it's not for Yama and that's where we left off. Learning about weapons and whatnot. The pistol and I share a history, ma'am. I couldn't leave it behind. And we're not interested in taking it from you. As protocol required, we performed a non-invasive multispectral scan. Nothing else. Nobody thinks you're hiding or planning anything, Operative. Even if we did, we wouldn't go un- We wouldn't go rummaging through your suitcase while your back was turned. I see. And you'd inform me just as overtly if any of its other contents were out of order. Again, operative, whatever embarrassing stuff you might have in there doesn't concern me. If I was interested in your dirty laundry, I'd be working for DCIS. Look, I recognize that my previous statement might have struck a nerve. If that's the case, I'm sorry. I won't bring up the past again, but we need to keep moving. You kosher with that? Operative? I nod. The commander nods back and sizes me up one last time. She points over her shoulder to a wide locker about my height, secured with a sliding door and one of the scanners she mentioned earlier. Within seconds, we're back on track, and thankfully so. That conversation could have gotten a lot more difficult. These are the gear lockers for our cell operatives. I can't imagine you'll have any problem finding yours. I take a few steps towards the locker and I begin to read through their labels engraved on their doors at eye level. Lucid 1, Lucid 2, Lucid 3. Lucid 9, R. Hayata. I'm getting the distinct impression that this is mine. After trepidatiously touching my wrist to the scanner, the locker door opens in front of me, revealing... Oh, you've got to be fucking... I hope you don't mind, but... We took your measurements and designed an ultralight composite armor system powered by your thor thoracic battery. This is the L2VX Carapace Ultralight Polymer Armor. When struck by a projectile, the outer layer of electrostatic polymer makes contact with the conductive viscoelastic fluid below, instantly tightening at the point of impact to absorb the force. So the skin tight jumpsuit gets even tighter after someone shoots me. 
<laughs> Wonderful! Don't you just love that? Don't you want your outfit to get tighter after you get shot? Call me crazy, but I don't think design choices for body armor should be made by an intern with a latex fetish. It looks a little thin. Fortunately, you'll be wearing more than this when you get deployed. As cutting edge as Wayford's body armor is, the carapace does doesn't have a dedicated power source. Can only absorb impacts of up to a hundred megajoules per square micrometer at a time and can protect you from much besides kinetic damage. It'll take a lot to kill you with this on, but if someone is insane enough to stab you with anything thinner than a razor blade, you're going to get injured. We're currently putting the final touches on your Seraph and Guardian series combat armor, both of which can be worn over the carapace. I'm definitely mispronouncing this. Calibration should be finished by this evening. Once that's out of the way, you should be able to find them here. The banner gets Je the commander gestures towards two columns of empty shelves on each side of the tactical jumpsuit slash fetish wear, presumably where the armor will be delivered. Below that is a large sealed compartment with a second scanner mounted on its front wall, frontal wall. Waving my wrist past it reveals a wide metal drawer filled with various firearms, magazines, and ammunition packages. Most notable armor, most mo notable among them, however, is what looks like an automatic sniper rifle. An automatic sniper rifle with a drum magazine bipod and Kazahaya Combine's logo. That's an X-150MA, isn't it? I see you found your standard issue assault rifle. When am I going to be assaulting with it? A tank? To be fair, it is a bit heavy if you're not wearing armor with an integrated powered exoskeleton. Good news is that the Guardian has that and more. That doesn't answer the question. That being said, the Seraph series is a bit lighter for the purpose of enhancing mobility, but both can withstand over four times as much damage as the carapace. I assume they offer protection from more than just ballistics. Both can shrug off a few lightning strikes or incendiary grenades, but I can't recommend deliberately exposing yourself to either. If you're going somewhere with a little too much radiation or too toxic gas, or toxic gas, however, both systems have a rebreather built into their helmets in case anything gets past the outer shell later. Outer layer. Sounds expensive. Everything worth having is operative, especially if it keeps you alive. 
The commander gestures towards a small machine pistol and a more typical looking assault rifle, both equipped with the lightweight reflex sights. For tighter engagement, oh, this is me again. For lighter engagements, you may want to use the X35S, some machine gun, or BR500 battle rifle. Well, all of the weapons here have adjustable and detachable sights, you'll have an easier time using this lighter one up close. My guess is that light engagement is code for an easy target. For example, an unarmed civilian. On second thought, I'd rather carry the anti-everything rifle around. A well-placed shot wouldn't even give them time to be afraid. Cleanup is going to be an absolute bitch for whoever is responsible for it, though. You'll have room for about three spare mags for each ammo type on every mission. If you find yourself running on empty when you come back, the X-150 MA takes 50, .50 BMG armor piercing high explosives. The X-35S takes standard 9mm rounds and the BR-500 takes 14mm KCOM Auto Magnum FM is... If you run dry completely, let me or an armory staff member know and we'll resupply you. That's pretty much everything for this neck of the woods. Be sure to check back later though. And don't hesitate to ask if you need anything else. We have supporters that can hook us up with pretty much anything. Like a Game Station 180 with Fabio Kart 8 pre-installed. The commander chuckles. I'll see what I can do, operative. Wait, did she actually take my request seriously? Something tells me I might like it here after all. That being said, my parents also liked working for Way Forward up until a certain point. Lastly, oh, lastly, there is the mess hall. Meals are served at 0600, 1200, and 1800 hours each day, but feel free to stop by and get something from the vending machines anytime if you're feeling hungry. And unfortunately, those aren't provided by the division for free, so money will be deducted from your corporate bank account every time you make an order through the microchip scanner. I should also miss it, mention that you'll have to cover the cost of all non-essential provisions and commodities delivered to you through our requisi requisition system. Figured there was a catch in there somewhere. The Game Station 180 with Fabio Car 8 is on me, though. Consider it as a welcome aboard present. I know it's a lot to take in, but we're glad to have you here. Glad to finally be here. The commander nods in affirmation before taking a step back and crossing her arms.
though, thankfully, not out of irritation. You dismissed. You're dismissed until further notice, operative. Be sure to read through the codex when you get the chance, though. I know I'm especially. I'm repeating myself, but the codex doesn't just have info on your augmentations. If you want to know more about how screwed the world is right now, you can get a lot of info there. Yeah, yeah, we did. That was actually very informative. It took a long time, but it was very good info to have. Trust me, you'll learn more there than you will holding down the tab key while I get forced to barf up my mundane ex exposition. Huh huh. Huh. So you know about the game stuff? You know. Do you see me, Emmy? Hi. I hope you weren't offended by my thoughts of your speech. Is there anything new in the codex? Like, did anything change? It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look like anything changed. <laughs> and really might be confused by that. <laughs> dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. I understand, ma'am. Dot dot dot. That's a dot 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 happening. Upon returning to my quarters, the first thing I do is open my suitcase. From what I've seen from her, the commander doesn't seem too dishonest. Quite the opposite, actually. Regardless, it never hurts to be mildly skeptical of authority. Secretly, that is. Always. Looks like a lot of my clothes are here. Laundry's still an issue, but not one I should be worried about right now. Hard liquor, handgun, various hygiene products, all seemingly uh, accounted for. I guess the commander was telling the truth after all. After looking around for a bit, I managed to find the computer terminal in my quarters. Hidden behind a slight sliding door of shaded glass. Not the most convenient placement, but still fairly private. As if an underground base wasn't already hidden enough. can see most of that one. Before logging on via wrist scanner, I double check my phone out of habit and subsequently uh, remember it's been bricked. Well, here goes nothing. Log on. Log on, I can only log on. Doo, doo, doo. I don't know, that's my login sound. Welcome Special Services Division Tenured Operative Lucid 9. Due to your recent acquisition of Alpha 1 Conditional Security Clearance, the appropriate local network access first time boot protocol has been ac uh, executed on your behalf. All relevant codex files pertaining to your environment and equipment have been uploaded to your, IR your iris visor. 
and will be accessible from there once their data integrity is verified. Please note that due to the protocol news, bulletins, status updates, and mission reports will not be copied to your iris visor and must be viewed from this terminal. If you'd like to contact member of the cell or requisition specialized equipment, you may do so here, but may need to wait several seconds for a seccom connection to be established. Oh! Oh, there's so many things! There's so many things I can do! Log off is not going to be the first thing I do. I'm going to look at the things. Um... WF Intranet Browser. Return to me. Okay, <laughs> I guess I can't do anything here. Um... Mission Log Slash Situation Update. Okay, nothing to do here. Return to me. Uh, view codex files. Okay, here's something. Organization, institutions, and events. Ah! Okay. So, uh, all right. So that's the stuff we actually that we hear in the codex. So, th there's a second way to access the codex, but nobody reads it to you! I like the fact that the codex is read to me. Um, equipment and enhancements. With this many files as this database has, I really ought to focus on reading the important ones in a timely fashion. As well as that, it's probably best to know what my armor is made of before I end up shooting anyone. Or, more importantly, before I get shot. Incepts. Developed for way forward pharmaceuticals by redacted incepts intraneural engram programming system gives operatives employees the, so we know what incepts are and we know how they work. Okay, cool. That certainly isn't disturbing at all. Yeah. As I understand it, this must have been the absolute black magic fuckery I saw in action when I got here. As I am, uh, that's what I read. Yama is alive, though. Oh, well, did it say something different? So I went over everything in the codex, just so you know. So there is like an episode I did where I went over everything in the codex. It was almost like an hour long. <laughs> At least most of him is. Before I have the opportunity to get distracted by hardship and existentialism for yet another fucking time, I notice my hands are shaking on the computer desk like two fetal rats trying to crawl their way off a dead mother and falling. That's very descriptive for shaking hands and subsequently dying. However, a quick sip from the flask in my coat manages to mitigate those symptoms. Ingram programming, huh? After clicking on an icon marked dismiss, a five item selection menu pops up in front of my face. I'm getting the sense that this is where I need to be. It, 
and see INSEPS combat protocols. The combat protocol series is general purpose INSEPS augmentation program that aims to make an operative more effective in overcoming violent confrontations with hostile armed targets. The first level of this protocol, integrated weaponry, weapon, hand, the, the first level of this protocol, integrated weapon handling, increases a compatible operatives combat skill to one by programming their motor cortex to execute voluntary movements such as aiming and recoil compensation with greater deal of control as well as providing them with conscious knowledge of how to handle pistols rifles and melee weapons with more accuracy and precision. Upon executing this protocol, an operative will also be more capable of targeting an enemy's weak points. The second level of this protocol, enhanced optical processing, interfaces with an operative's optic nerves and nerves, yeah, I said that right, and visual cortex to enhance the bandwidth reaction time and transmission rates of visual stimuli. stimuli. In addition, this protocol includes a non-transmissible retroviral enhancement which optimizes rod and cone cells in the retina by expanding their density, coverage, and color sensitivity. The result of this enhancement allows each operative optic nerve to transmit a hundredfold increase in image resolution and thousandfold increase in ultra short term visual memory, image processing, reaction, latency, a metric comparable to the refresh rate of a computer graphics pro- processing unit. Wow. There we go. The third and final level of the combat protocol series, Ultimate Protocol Horus, further enhances an operative's optical image resolution by an additional factor of in 10 enhances ultra short-term visual memory image processing reaction latency by an additional factor of 100 and containing and contains a retrovial vector which enhances retin- retinal tissue to allow an operative to see in the microwave infrared ultraviolet and x-ray spectra in areas with poor visibility conditions this protocol also enables the operative to subconsciously and ultra rapidly calculate lead angles for moving targets based on the velocity of their targets and the velocity of the projectiles fired at them. Well, that's cool. We will read all the internet stuff in the next episode. I feel like that's going to be a whole episode in itself. Um, so we'll see more about all the cool stuff. 